And, and maybe I just missed it. Maybe I was, you know, looking, you know, too forward, looking forward to uh, the 4th of July too much. But Brady was in the news. Tom Brady, you know, uh, he was actually doing an interview and we all know what what was going to come up so we might as well get into it right now brady was talking about then they asked him about the whole concussion you know situation and he responded in true brady fashion uh this was on what was this sunday yeah so e60 uh and so they were having a conversation and, and for those who may forgot or don't remember or didn't hear about it you know i don't know how you didn't hear about it but his wife giselle Bunchen, was on uh, CBS uh, this morning and she was talking about him playing football and she so happened to mention that he had concussions she he would come home and he would have a concussion and the problem was is that Brady didn't come up on any injury reports for concussions so you know this is gonna throw everything you know for you know crazy crazy you know uh, story so now here's what Brady said this is, and, and, and I'm like, this is pure Brady. He said, she's there every day. I mean, we go to bed in the same bed every night. So I think she knows when I'm sore. She knows when I'm tired. She knows when I get hit. We drive home together from games, but she also knows how well I take care of myself. She's a very concerned wife and very loving. That's I, What do you want to take from that? Are you seeing you had one or not, Tom? To me, it sounds like you just went around it. Because if you didn't, you would have just said, nah, man, you know, she just thought I did. It was an error. It was a common mistake. Or, you know, it was just a simple error, you know, on her part. So that leaves open because because Tom could have, Brady could have just went ahead and did this from the, from the get go. But we all know if he did something like that and he actually did have a concussion, then it's going to come back to bite him. And you know Goodell is going to be sitting there. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's Goodell rubbing his hands saying, yeah, I'm going to finish him now. Yeah. And Tom got to be careful, you know, about that. But it, it's real weird that he just really didn't just, you know, just dead the whole thing and just say, hey, look, man, I ain't had no concussion. D did you see it on the report? If it wasn't on the, if, if I had a concussion, it would have been on the report, right? Right? And it wasn't on the report. So I, I it, it's not over. We're not done talking about it. Training camp is literally <laughs> maybe a couple weeks away. And we're going to get right back into it. And we're going to be talking about it. And, and anytime something comes where there's a hit or anything like that, we're going to bring it up. We're going to ask them about it. So this is going to be going on at least probably the first four games of the season. We're going to start at training camp, but we're going to probably take this into the season. And it just needs to be handled. It needs to be answered, you know, with a different answer. That's it. And everyone knows I'm a Tom Brady fan because he played for the Michigan Wolverines and I am a Michigan Wolverine fan. So I root for Brady, you know, personally, personal success, not team success. But it just makes it hard when he makes comments like that. And I think Grego, who is a Patriots fan, would agree with me on that. I think it just makes it a little hard to say. I can support Tom Brady on that. Tom, I just need you to go ahead and dead it, man. Just dead it if you if it, if uh, if if you can. Please help us out, you know. But matter of fact, if you don't, then you just give us something more to talk about. So maybe that's what people want, you know, on it. But Tom Brady, once again, as Tom Brady would do, he he, he answers the question, but he doesn't answer the question by kind of answering it, but really didn't, you know, if that makes sense. So this will go on, you know, for, for weeks on top of weeks. What's not going on is Chauncey Billups and the Cleveland Cavaliers. So Chauncey Billups decided, mm, I'm going to pass on this uh, president's job. And he stepped back, stepped out of it. He was in the run. I think an offer was made to him. There was a report that there was an offer made to him. And, and Chauncey said, you know what, thanks, but no thanks. To me, I think that was the best move 
for Chauncey Billups. And here's why. I'm going to say this. Uh, a lot of people will be like, but, you know, the, the Cavs, they're, they're stacked. LeBron, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think Chauncey knows LeBron is gone after the end of this season. I think he, or or maybe if he doesn't know, he has a very, very, very good feeling that LeBron could be gone after this season. And I, I've said this, you know, plenty of times. I never, ever, ever thought that LeBron was coming back to Cleveland to retire in Cleveland. From the get-go, it was win this championship as fast as possible, as soon as possible, and as many as possible in a certain time frame, in a certain window. And then after that, if you give them a a ring, especially if he had to give them two rings, I would have been like, it's a guarantee. But if you gave them a ring, he out. And I think Chauncey knew that. Or Like I said, he had a very good feeling. And it's more of what happens after LeBron leaves. Because you got to think, if LeBron leaves, chances are they're going to trade one of uh, Kyrie or Kevin Love. And to me, it, it's going to be Kevin Love. You know, uh, they're going to try and get some more pieces, or some more assets, or whatever it is that you want. You're going to try and keep Kyrie because he's the youngest. He's the bigger, you know, of the two. He's the bigger star. And, and you want Cleveland fans because he's been there. You know, since day one, since he got drafted, you want Cleveland fans to be, you know, uh, uh, bought in with Kyrie versus trying to be bought in with Kevin. And Chauncey sat there and said, I don't want none of that. I don't want none of that. And I don't blame him to come in in your first presidential. I mean, we we're not going to go to the Knicks, but look how it worked out. Now, some of that is self-inflicted, but look how it worked out for Phil Jackson. I think Phil Jackson found out it was not easy. It was not like being a coach. And I think Chauncey knew that. It was just like, look, my first one that I'm going to go into, there's going to be big expectations to, you know, to a certain degree on his part because everyone is going to be like LeBron is the GM. LeBron is the one that negotiates all this stuff. And you just go out, you know, you just get the people and bring them in, you know, but it's not that it's what happens after LeBron leaves. And we saw we saw what happened after LeBron left the first time. It was a ghost town in Cleveland, man. Nobody was going to the games. And nobody wanted to come to Cleveland to play. I've said this in the past, ladies and gentlemen. I've said it multiple times. It's just when people talk about, you know, uh, LeBron and and all this stuff, going to other teams and whatever, and he didn't want to be the man and all that stuff, LeBron left an open spot, an open requisition. The number was, the open rec was number one. Not one nine nine five 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 six, nothing like that. It was just requisition number one. He left an open wreck for anybody who wanted that spot when he went to Miami. And free agent after free agent after free agent, nobody went to Cleveland. Kyrie was there by himself because he got drafted. Kyrie tried to do all that he could do. And Kyrie was trying to, you know, grow and into this being the man and all this stuff. And I think right now he's learning it and he's going to be, you know, what everybody, you know, wants him to be. But for those four years that LeBron was gone, there was an open wreck for anyone to apply and to take that position. But nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted to touch it, you know. So. That's what's going to happen. And I think Chauncey knew that. It's just like, it's going to turn into a ghost town. You're not going to be able to get the guys that you want. Then you're going to get frustrated. Other guys are going to get frustrated. And then this whole, you know, thing that we went through before, we're going to be talking about, man, remember when we won the championship? It's going to seem so long ago, you know? I mean, I just said this to a friend. It's not the same thing. But the Hawks, they, I'm talking about the Hawks again. Yeah, I'm talking about the Hawks. The Hawks. They two years removed from going to the Eastern Conference Final, and not one of those guys on their starting five is on their team anymore. All of them gone. Now Millsap is gone. He was the last person. They're gone in two years. So that seems so long ago. It would be the same way with this. And Chauncey doesn't want that. I don't think he want to touch that. He's just like, look, if I'm going to come in, I'd rather come into 
uh, uh, a franchise where the expectations is not as high. I don't want to say low because Chauncey ain't a guy like that, but not as high, you know, and let me build and give me give me time. You know, trying to overcome LeBron leaving, that's a hard task. So Chauncey, I think that was a smart move. You know, here is not no pump move or anything like that. You got to set yourself up. You got to put yourself in a position to succeed. And I think Chauncey just felt right now where he would, where he's at at this moment, he's not in a spot where he probably could succeed. So I have to respect that. I respect that. Chauncey, do you, bro. Do you. Uh, shouts out to my man BS3 Sports. My man Ben uh, from X Squad. He is also in here. So uh, Ben, we don't need you. He's talking about no big L. Hawks not uh, not making the playoffs. We don't need you co-signing on anything, Ben. All right? We we. We, we already discussed that. We already discussed that. We talked about the Pistons. Now you want to talk about the Hawks or whatever. Let's lay off of it. Hawks still could be in the seventh or eighth spot, man. Just just lay off of it, Ben. You know, I know your Mavericks ain't going to be in there either. How about that now? Yeah, yeah. I'm petty. I'm petty, Ben. Yeah. But uh, appreciate you for joining the show, sir. Uh, and, and feel free to put any more comments in the chat room that, that you want. Um, but yeah, Chauncey said, nah, bro, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out. And I think for right now, I think that's a good move. I, I think, and, and even for Cleveland, I think that's a good move. I think Cleveland really needs a guy or a young lady. We're not sexist here. They need someone who either has had experience or will be able to handle that type of situation, you know, if it was like a, a a Jerry West type of person or something like that, yeah, you know, Pat Riley, I know, but you're asking a lot, I know, you're asking a lot, but for that situation, you got to have the right person, you know, in there, and I just, I just don't think right now is the right time for Chauncey to take that spot, and I think he realized that, so someone will be there, you know, and they'll have to deal with the LeBron situation, but it won't be Chauncey. So Chauncey can continue with his big three basketball playing self. So uh, we're going to take a break here uh, just for a second, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more, you know, about basketball. But also I want to get into this boxing, you know, uh, that happened over the weekend that was, <laughs> well, you know what, we'll, we'll talk about it when I get back. But for right now, let, let's take a break and we'll come right back. SME, you're not ready for the number one Chief Rocket Jersey Vern doing his recap show on SME. Listen, ain't nobody out here show can go three hours nonstop, no commercial interruptions, anything like that. The Chief Rocket does a three hour show with no breaks. So all you other talk shows, you better up your game and get it right because the Jersey Vern is about to stomp on you, the number one chief rocker. Boom, shaka laka suckers. Coming straight from the A. Kick it with your boy KC at www.kc.com. This show covers some of the realest issues trending today. He'll keep you locked in from the first listen. You can find him online on his mobile app or at KYSII.com, XSquadAffiliates.com, iTunes, Google Play, and especially on the SME Network, you don't want to miss it. We don't take orders from super fools. We give them any and all resistance to a crumble. Nonsense. There's never been a threat. Squad. Couldn't handle. It is the purpose of the Squad. To align our infamous forces against the powers of good and defeat them, leaving us the rulers of the world. All music artists, lend me your ear. Looking for that hot beat to make your next hit? Go to FarrellJarrowMusic.com. Tired of paying for overpriced studio time for mediocre beats? Go Go to FarrellJarrowMusic.com. FarrellJarrowMusic.com offers industry-quality hip-hop, trap, R&B, and pop beats that will take your creativity to the next level. We know it's hard to find dope beats out there, so don't waste any more time searching YouTube for whack beat selling websites. Go, go to farrelljarmusic.com today to cop the beat for your next hit. Mixing and mastering services available too. 
Thank you.